On June 17, 1930, USS Houston was commissioned. Named for the city of Houston, Texas, she served in the Pacific as the flagship of the Asiatic Fleet, protecting American interests when war broke out between China and Japan in 1932. After service in the Asiatic Fleet, she became part of the scouting force, making several special cruises. The period between uh, when she came back to the States in uh, 32, I believe it was, uh, she was uh, used as a flagship uh, for the president on four different occasions. She hosted uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt on, on four cruises. Um, and he, he loved the ship. He, he really loved the ship. He loved ships in general. I mean, Roosevelt was, um, he loved the Navy. On July 1st, 1934, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt came on board in Annapolis, Maryland. She would later become Roosevelt's favorite ship, transporting him to various ports on the east and west coasts of the United States. As pre-war tensions grew, Admiral Thomas Hart, commander of the Asiatic Fleet, dispatched the ships. One week before Pearl Harbor, we were instructed to leave Manila Bay and cruise south toward Indonesia. Admiral Hart and Admiral Glassford, they were flying down to Iloilo, and we stopped there and waited for their plane to arrive. And as soon as their plane arrived, they gave us instructions to leave the harbor immediately and go south. Well, immediately when we left the harbor, a captain came on the PA system and said, and this was about midnight, said, we are in a state of war. The Japanese have bombed Pearl Harbor. On February 15, 1942, Houston sailed with a small Allied convoy to reinforce the garrison on Timor, fending off numerous Japanese air attacks. The next day, the Japanese attacked in full force. Houston's anti-aircraft fire saved the convoy from destruction. At the very last of, of the bombing which took place, the, of these 45 planes, three at a time would come over and drop bombs on the fleet there and drop bombs on us. And we were able to dodge until the very last group of planes came over. One bomb hit our turret three and knocked it out and killed about 50 men. We continued to convoy ships from Port Darwin uh, up to uh, the island of Timor. During convoying those ships, we were attacked more than one time by Japanese bombers to bomb the ships uh, and to bomb us, but we were never, never hit again. February 27, 1942, Houston, along with Allied cruisers and destroyers under the command of Royal Netherlands Navy Admiral Karel Dorman, encountered a Japanese naval force commanded by Admiral Takeo Takagi. Both fleets opened fire in a battle that severely damaged and sunk Allied ships. Dorman orders his four remaining cruisers north to stop the invasion of Java. Japanese torpedoes sank the two Dutch cruisers, one of which took Dorman with her. Before losing his life, Dorman ordered Houston and the Australian cruiser Perth to retire. All of the ships were either sunk or put out of action except the Houston and the Australian light cruiser, the HMAS Perth. 
On February 28th, Perth and the USS Houston, retiring as ordered, came across the Japanese invasion force with tired crews and low ammunition. We had entered the strait, the Sunda Strait, and we, of course, were all blacked out. The Perth ship, the captain of the Perth ship was a little older than our captain, so he was in command of our two ships. Together, Houston and Perth engaged the Japanese. But Perth, the first to engage the Japanese ships, comes under heavy fire. She was gone within an hour. But all of a sudden, about 11 o'clock, the Perth in front of us opened fire. And she was firing at destroyers. And of course, immediately, we found out we were in the midst of a landing party of a Japanese landing. There was at least a destroyer on each side of us for the entire time we were in there. And when we were firing at them and they were firing at us, if we fired at them, we had to either be going so we could go broadside or forward head on. We could not be leaving the enemy and firing a defensive fire. So we saw, we saw the Perth burning and we saw her disappear. And she had about the same percentage of survivors that we had. Not too many. And then after she sank, we lasted until uh, almost another 40 minutes. Houston, alone, fought the enemy all around her, but began to lose headway after taking torpedo damage. Shortly after midnight, the ship came to a stop after a bursting shell fragment killed the ship's commander, Captain Albert H. Rooks. Japanese destroyers stood in closer, machine gunning her decks. Damage done to our ship was uh, at least three, if not four, or maybe even more torpedoes on our starboard side. Uh, plus, while we were firing at them, they were firing at us surface fire. They killed a lot of our topside personnel. We watched our ships sink. Bow first was the big starboard list, and the stern was high, and it didn't last long. It was only a very few minutes, and we saw our flag still flying from the mainmast, our battle flag, which flies at night as well as daytime. In June 2014, divers from the Mobile Diving and Salvage Unit 1, along with personnel from the Indonesian Navy, took part in the Cooperation of Float Readiness Training Exercise, where they surveyed the wreck. So the wreck of the USS Houston was probably discovered sometime in the late 1960s. and the early 1970s, the U.S. government was presented with a bell from the site. And that's our first concrete piece of evidence that uh, we uh, had located the, the target. Um, on behalf of the U.S. Navy, uh, the first survey to, to uh, assess the state of, of uh, the wreck and to confirm the identity and the site and the location took place in 2014. So our, our first priority was to confirm the identity of the shipwreck and the location. And in order to do that, we conducted a series of diving exercises uh, on the site uh, together with the Indonesian Navy. And uh, we were able to identify the length of the, of the vessel, uh, different features that we could compare to the schematics of the ship, as well as compare damage uh, all that we see on site with damage uh, in the final damage report following the engagement. And all those pieces together led us to believe that uh, this is the wreck of USS Houston. 
Nicknamed the Galloping Ghost of the Java Coast, USS Houston and most of her crew were lost. But her legacy lives on. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Magic, Phaser 1 1's chicken. Phaser 1 Baja, Benedict, Delta, Charlie, over. Phaser 1, Benedict, Sunset.